The big question: What were the key causes of the decline of the powerful Inca Empire? Chapter Eight: All Roads Lead to Cusco. By the 1500s, the Inca Empire included present-day Ecuador, Bolivia, Peru, and parts of Colombia, Chile, and Argentina. This long, narrow empire extended from the north to the south. Along the western coast of South America, it was home to some of the world's driest deserts and highest mountain peaks. The capital of the Inca Empire was Cusco. The name Cusco means "navel of the world." All roads led to Cusco, and it was indeed the center of the Inca world, according to legend. Manco Capac, the first Sapa Inca. Founded Cusco around 1200 C.E. Cusco was a city filled with impressive stone buildings. The Inca were master stonemasons. They used huge stone blocks tightly fitted together to build palaces, temples, and government buildings. They did not use mortar to hold the stones in place. Important government officials came and went from Cusco, carrying out the empire's business. Few commoners ever entered the city, unless invited to a special ceremony or gathering. The Coricancha, or Temple of the Sun, dominated Cusco's main plaza and served as the religious center of the empire. Covered with sheets of gold and silver, its walls gleamed. The temple was reserved for priests, the Sapa Inca, his family, and Akyas or chosen women. Temple of the Sun, Akyas, the emperor's new clothes. Akyas lived together, preparing ritual food, maintaining the sacred fire, and making daily offerings to the gods. Akyas wove fine textiles. They made all of Sapa Inca's clothes as well as the clothes of the nobility. They used nothing but the best wool, the fine, silky white fleece of the vicuña, a wild relative of the llama. These chosen women spent their entire lives working for the emperor. Sapa Inca Pachacuti built a fortress in the hills surrounding Cusco. The fortress, called Sacsayhuaman, is one of the most important architectural masterpieces on Earth. Scientists think that it took twenty thousand men about sixty years to complete the fortress. Nobody knows how its stone construction was possible. They did not use wheels to transport large stones or to lift them into place. The Inca may have used llamas. Pack animals native to the Andes to carry heavy materials. They may have used logs, ropes, and ramps to move massive limestone boulders into place. Stone masons shaped the many-sided stones with pounding rocks and bronze chisels. The stones fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, wedged so tightly together. Not even a blade of grass could slide between the stones. These jagged walls have withstood earthquakes for more than five hundred years. The fortress of Sacsayhuaman, tightly wedged stones, everyday life in the Inca Empire. Commoners lived in alu units in the surrounding countryside. Their homes had few windows. And often filled with smoke from central fireplaces, families lived in one-room rectangular huts made of adobe and thatch, and slept on straw mats on cold earthen floors. To make clothing, Inca women and girls wove animals' wool into cloth and dyed the cloth with vegetable dyes. Most people's clothing was made from the wool of domesticated llamas and alpacas. Native to the Andes, the much finer wool of vicuñas was used to make the clothing of royalty alone. Men and boys wore loincloths 
and knee-length tunics. Women and girls wrapped their bodies in one large cloth from head to toe. These loose cloths were belted at the waist and pinned at the shoulder. Males and females both wore cloaks and sandals. Clothing was much the same throughout the empire, but different regions wove distinctive patterns into their cloth. Every region had its own style of hats as well. Skilled artisans populated the hills and coastline long before the Inca Empire came to power. They used metal, stone, and clay to make both decorative and useful tools. Noble men and women received beautiful gold jewelry paid to the emperor as part of the commoners' required taxes. Commoners did not always stay in the same place. The government conquered new groups and moved people from existing Elu units to different parts of the empire. These government arranged relocations, killed two birds with one stone, or served two purposes at once. First, the relocations stationed workers where they were needed. Perhaps one part of the empire needed masons, and another needed skilled potters or weavers. Second, the relocations made it more difficult for the newly conquered tribes to remain unified. This helped prevent them from rebelling against the government. Inca woman wearing traditional cloak and sandals. Royal fighting, Pizarro, and the end of an empire. The government kept tribal rebellions under control. However, a quarrel between two royal brothers nearly brought down the Inca Empire. Brothers Atahualpa and Huascar were fighting for control of the empire. Their father, Sapa Inca Juana Capac, gave each brother separate parts of the empire to rule. When the emperor died, both brothers wanted to rule the entire kingdom. They were fighting with each other when the Spanish arrived in South America. The year was 1532 CE. Francisco Pizarro, a Spanish conquistador, was exploring the Pacific coast of South America in search of gold. He led his men through deserts and over snow-capped mountains. The conquistadors were delighted to find that the Incas Swaying suspension bridges were strong enough to support their crossings on horseback. Many suspension bridges could support horses. When Pizarro arrived, he found the city of Cusco weakened from the fighting between the brothers. The Spanish joined forces in favor of Huascar. They imprisoned his brother Atahualpa. Knowing that the Spanish had come in search of riches, Atahualpa made a deal with the Spanish. He offered to fill his prison cell with gold and silver in exchange for his life. The Spanish agreed. Then, at the eleventh hour, or the latest possible moment, the Spanish changed their minds. They killed Atahualpa and kept his room full of treasures. The Inca civilization began slowly and lasted barely one hundred years. Civil war had already weakened the Inca Empire before the Spanish conquerors arrived. European diseases killed 40% of the Inca population, quickening the end of the empire. When the Inca Empire ended, it was the largest pre-Columbian empire in the Americas. Descendants of the Inca still live in the Andes today, carrying on many of their traditions. Atahualpa, in chains, looks on as his prison cell is filled with treasure. City in the Clouds Machu Picchu is often called the City in the Clouds. Its crumbling palaces and temples are perched on a mountain ridge high in the Andes. Built in the 1400s, Machu Picchu probably served as a royal estate and ceremonial center for Inca emperors. Machu Picchu is one of the world's most important archaeological sites. 
Located about 45 miles from Cusco, the Inca abandoned Machu Picchu before the Spanish arrived. Hidden in the mountains, Spanish conquerors never discovered this gem. It remained widely unknown until 1911 when Melkor Ortega, a local Quechua-speaking man, led American archaeologist Hiram Bingham there. The Inca left no written records of their empire. Archaeologists must rely heavily on such sites for clues about how the Inca lived. Today, tourists make the strenuous climb along the Inca Trail just to watch the sunrise over Machu Picchu's surrounding peaks.